Good day. My name is Mark Lucchetti, Associate Field Marketing Manager with Wiley Science Solutions. Welcome to today's webinar entitled Introduction to Know-It-All for IR and Raman for Vibrational Spectroscopy. It is my pleasure today to introduce you to our speaker for this informative session, Assistant Editor, Dr. Leanna Ergen of Wiley Science Solutions. Dr. Ergen helps create tools for spectroscopy, structural and scientific standard reference data and helps create innovative software applications. She completed her PhD in clinical bioanalytical chemistry from Cleveland State University, where she developed a protocol for processing hyperspectral image data. Leanna joined Wiley in 2022. We are excited to have Dr. Ergen present us today her webinar entitled Introduction to Know-It-All for IR and Raman for Vibrational Spectroscopy. We encourage the audience to submit questions, which will be addressed at the end of the session. With that, I'll turn the stage over to Dr. Ergen for her presentation. Take it away, Leanna. Thank you, Mark. So what is Know-It-All? Know-It-All provides all the tools that you need for effective spectral analysis. Combined with Wiley's comprehensive spectral databases, it's really an unparalleled solution for spectral analysis. You get access to patent tools you won't find in any other software, plus expert and automated features to accelerate your workflows. It supports multiple techniques, so even if you change instruments or add a new technique, you won't disrupt your spectral analysis workflow. It is also VPAT 508 accessible. So with all the tools that you need for effective spectral analysis in a single easy to use interface, it saves you time and improves your workflow. So Know-It-All is used in a wide range of applications. This list is not inclusive. I'm not going to read through them all, but you can. And in terms of our IR and Raman spectral databases, Wiley is the leader for spectral libraries with the world's largest collection of high quality IR and Raman spectra, including the renowned Sattler, Hummel, and Sigma Aldrich libraries. Plus, we have new groundbreaking AI generated IR library that doubles Wiley's compound coverage. This is trusted data from a trusted source. So next, I would like to demonstrate our software. So when you first open Know-It-All, this is where you are greeted. On the left side, there are different toolboxes that each contain various applications. So for example, if I click, if I click Basics, you will see Chem Window, which is our structure drawing application, Report It, which is our reporting tool, and so on. In the Data toolbar, there are applications for data mining, such as Search It and Mine It. I am going to start our demonstration in ID Expert, which is our highly automated search application. So my first demonstration has to do with our optimized corrections algorithms. So I'm closing out of this open dialog box to go to File, Settings, the Optimized Corrections tab. The sample that I'm going to be opening first was a Raman sample, so I'm changing the technique to Raman. And I want to show you that each and every one of our optimized corrections is enabled. So this is baseline correction, vertical clipping, intensity distortion, horizontal offset, vertical offset, and Raman intensity distortion. Note that each and every one of these can be toggled on or off. We can toggle on or off optimized corrections as a whole. I'm clicking OK. So now I'm clicking New Search. I am opening a sample that is Raman Spectrum of Mint Candy. And when I open this, the search proceeds against our database automatically. And we see that our top hit with a hit score of 92.13 is desorbital. Up at the top, we see our corrected spectrum of desorbital in orange and our corrected spectrum of our sample in black. But this is a very good match between the two. If you want to know what's happening behind the scenes in optimized corrections, you can click this little information button. 
and a window pops up telling you exactly what happens. The baseline of the query spectrum was corrected. You can see uncorrected spectrum in black and corrected in orange. Second, the baseline of the reference spectrum was corrected. The intensity values of the reference spectrum were adjusted by a factor of 0 0.16. The Raman specific intensity distortions were corrected by applying an adjustment factor of 60.4% to all regions above 2474.9 wave numbers. The top 4.6% of the reference spectrum was clipped. The query spectrum was offset horizontally. The reference spectrum was offset vertically. So this is not a black box. You can find out exactly what optimized corrections were applied. Now, let's see what happens if we run this again, but this time without optimized corrections. So just for a visual look at how good of a match the two spectra are at the top. And for a more quantitative approach, you can see our hit score for the match was 92.13. But now I'm going to File, Settings, Optimized Corrections, and I am deselecting Enabled so that Optimized Corrections is not going to be used. Once I click OK, the search repeats. This time you actually see that the top hit is glycerin, which this is mint candy, and that the, uh, the hit score is very low, 45.23 out of a range of 100. Um, you actually even see thyroid tissue down on this list with a hit score that's not that different. So this just goes to show how powerful optimized corrections is in terms of making sure your sample spectrum can be matched to something in the database and be matched well. So for my second example, I am still in ID Expert. I'm clicking New Search. I'm going to be opening an unknown sample. This is ID Expert IR and ATRIR of unknown sample, and there's a number after it. So the spectrum that I opened happens to be a mixture of two components, but I did not give this information to the software. When the search is complete, you are actually going to see the software guide you through what it thinks you need to do. So what I mean by that is we always make the claim that know-it-all is simple software with a step-by-step -step procedure. And let me show you what happens when this two-component result finishes running. You will see that it starts flashing. This is the software's way of saying, hey, our top hit is actually a mixture of two components, not one component. So I'm going to click the thing that's flashing, two component results. And we see our composite spectrum. And we see two different components below this. So this is just an example where if the software thinks you need to do something, it's going to tell you about that. Now, in terms of creating reports, it's actually really straightforward. There's this button that says Create Report. If you wish to add text, you can. I'm skipping that for now. But a PDF of the report is generated automatically. You can go through and change all of the default settings and create your own customized report template that can be used each time. Now, we have another application called Search It. I don't think I have time for a demo today, but the search examples I've done so far used the application ID Expert, but Search It is what we recommend for more advanced spectral searches against databases. This tool gives you more control over your searches. You can do spectral searches using this tool, but you can also search properties, names, structures, and so on. But let's go back to ID Expert for now. 
because what I'm excited to show you here for my next example involves deformulation. So I am clicking this all compounds radio button and I'm clicking new search. And I am going to open a deformulation example. So all compounds, when this is selected, searches for chemicals and materials, where pure compounds will just search among chemicals only. So I, I ran this sample using the all compounds approach, meaning it's going to search the databases for everything that we have. But our top hit with a very high score of 100.00 is this compound, or sorry, this material called Aculon S223-HM8. If you're not familiar with that, which I think a lot of people will not be familiar with it, what you can do to figure out chemically what this is, is run the search using pure compounds. We found the name of a material, but we want the name of the chemical components. So searching using pure compounds selected is going to search the database only for chemicals. So this time, once again, our best result is going to be the one of the two component results. And once again, two component results is flashing, saying, hey, click on me. So we see our composite spectrum, but we also see two individual chemicals. Nylon 66, it's estimating the ratio is 0 0.54, or calculating the ratio is that, and calcium phosphate tribasic ratio of 0 0.46. So pure compounds makes deformulation straightforward and much faster than traditional approaches. Okay, so my next example is going to involve a mixture of polymers. I'm going to use a different application for this. So I'm going to the spectral analysis toolbox and I'm clicking analyze it. So Analyze it is useful when there's no spectral match in the database. It's a peak analysis tool or a functional group analysis tool. I'm clicking open spectrum. I'm opening this mixture of polymers. It's asking which describes the imported spectrum, organic IR or polymer IR, definitely polymer in this case. So our spectrum has opened and what we are doing within Analyze It is selecting individual peaks and searching those. So there is a button up here called Suggest. Looks like a little light bulb with an exclamation point in it. And it will suggest peaks. Alternatively, you can just double click on a peak of interest. But right now I have this peak at 1188 selected, and I'm clicking the correlate button. And what happens is superimposed over top of my spectrum, we have different options we can choose from based on our search of the peak at 1188. And those are overlaid in blue. But you can just go down the list and try to find something that you think is a good match for the peak of interest. And I think this one is a pretty good match. Poly 2,6 dimethyl 1,4 phenylene oxide. Right click, add to summary plus. What that does is it adds it to a list that I can generate on this other tab. And this is an iterative process. So I am going to pick another peak to select. And 
Let me just show you this time. I'm going to select a peak the other method by just double clicking on a peak. And once again, I have a list of results. And we can click them to overlay. And I think this polystyrene is decent match for my peak locations. So right click, add to summary plus. And what that has done is I now have both of those compounds I've selected so far on this summary plus tab. And if I click control, hold down control and click the other one, they're both selected. And I can see both of those in blue overlaid on my mixture of polymer spectrum orange in the back. And this is an iterative process. You can go through searching for as many of these peaks as you'd like until you have a list that satisfies you. So this concludes our demonstration on the know-it-all IR and Raman tools. If you have any questions, please visit the Wiley Science Solutions website at sciencesolutions.wiley.com. This is the end of the presentation. We will now open up the floor for some questions. That was a wonderful webinar, Liana. We've reached the end of our presentation today. Thank you, Dr. Ergen, for your time and expertise to present us your talk on the introduction to know it all for IR and Raman for vibrational spectroscopy. Joining us today is Dr. Michelle D'Souza of Wiley Science Solutions for our question and answer period. We'd now like to open up the session for some questions from our attendees, which if you can please type in using the questions toolbar, that would be great. Okay, let's see what we have here. Um, is Know-It-All also working with SIRS? And if so, is there an additional steps to be done? Um, would you like to take this one, Michelle? Liana, maybe um, we would like to say is we're working on to work with SIR data. Yeah, we pay attention to SIR data. We'd like to work with SIR data. Work in progress. Mm -hmm. Thank you both. Um, here's another one. Uh, when you choose all compounds and appear, that appear on the bottom right hand, uh, the several spectrums that mean the sample has more, does that mean that the sample has more than one substance? Yes. Um, all, com all compounds and any sample we ever run uh, within old settler barrett as well as YD, it could be materials used in airline industry or in any uh, chemical industry. It doesn't have to be a pure substance. What I mean is pure compound as a pure chemical structure. So it could be anything. Great, thank you, Michelle. Um, do you find better results, meaning higher matches with different methods such as ATR versus microscope attachment? Um, yes and no. For certain samples, ATR works better, um, especially, um, you you shouldn't uh, break down the sample, and that's indirect. ATR works better. We do have massive ATR database. However, know it all has the capability to correct IR reference spectrum to uh, match an ATR sample. Or if you have IR sample, we use our ATR data corrected and to match your IR sample. So we can work both ways. Um, Microscope attachment, we are working on that uh, to do the, that kind of IR. Uh, right now, we don't have database for microscope uh, IR, but uh, um, you know, we, we're working on that part. That's all I can say right now. Great, thank you, Michelle. Here's another good one. What do you recommend in search it for match, correlation, or derivativization? Yeah, this is this is great. This is my favorite um, discussion point with people. Okay, if you you think your compound is pretty pure uh, as a single compound or sim single very good sample, 
you should use correlation in general to match because correlation pays attention to uh, area under curve. So uh, when you get a match, it's a really good match. It, it pretty much identify a compound. However, when you have a mixture and you cannot find the equivalent in the databases, you should use derivative because derivative points out where are the peaks and it detects all the minor peaks. So for mixture, you have very a lot of peaks and hairy sharp peaks. Uh, first derivative works better. I like first derivative myself because if you pay, I don't have always, what I do is I do not always have a pure sample to work with. So I always have a mixture. I always check the first derivative method. And then the difference is correlation you know, the big IR bands pulls, pulls heavy weight toward higher HKY. But, st but derivative ignores the huge area under curve for those functional groups, pay more attention to finer details of your sample. Okay, so it, you should use both ways. I always use both ways, but sometimes I get very good match in correlation. I don't need to check derivative method. Great, thank you, Michelle. Um, here's one. Um, can, let's see. Where, can know it all be used in the identification of the polymer type of microplastic samples? Yes, yes, we have it. In fact, we have with um, um, our analytical data, people get a free database where we have a microplastic. Um, uh, what, what what we call is con, you know uh, spectrum, but it's consensus spectrum means for certain type of microplastic they exhibit certain trends, uh, peaks, and then um, uh, absorbance band and everything. We generate um, we extract all those information from real sample, and then we provide a uh, like classification spectrum, so you can match to that. It works pretty good. Great. So this one um, comes with each uh, analytical edition, so it's no separate database. You don't you don't have to buy a separate database for it. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, how about this one for the predicted IR library? How was the data proven to be accurate? We did internal validation study. So when you create a model, you use eighty percent of data to test, and then twenty percent to Verify. So we did uh, internal um, validation, and also we did ask uh, our um, subject matter expert to put our opinions. And I think the best test is to try it out and see if it. We we believe it compensate uh, the the area, the chemical space where we have less data. So it it should um, help people to at least identify, uh, you know, classify your compounds. And I'd, I'd like to add to that one a bit. The database was actually constructed from our high quality reference data sets, such as Wiley's Sattler Spectral Database. And so that is ensuring that only good data went into making this. Mm -hmm. Thank you both for that. All right, uh, how about this one? Um, if you create a report with multiple components, is there a possibility to show the chemical information of the components as it is possible for a single component? Yes, you can design, uh, we, we don't have a chance to show that. You can design your report template to display co combined, compo combined spectrum and then component spectrum, you can. Thank you, Michelle. Um, does Wiley offer getting the raw spectral, uh, the raw spectra of molecules in CSV or any other file format? No, our data are proprietary. We do not um, let people have the original data. Thank you, Michelle. Um, how about this one? Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about the new quantitation application? Yeah, that's a, a nice one. Um, it is, I think it's very easy to use and it's generic across different technologies. Uh, I wouldn't say uh, 
for NMR, yeah, that's a different um, way to do quantitation. But for TCMS, UV, IR, Raman, as well as other uh, kind of uh, GC, uh, just pure GC chromatogram, all work uh, basically with a similar workflow. And then we have uh, both external standard uh, calculation as well as internal standard you can work. Um, for the internal standard, I'm very, uh, I'm very proud of the uh, GCMS portion. We can uh, let people pick an iron or a couple of irons to uh, use that better to quantify. And we have good examples to show it. Yes, um, we have a, I think we have a trial. Um, you're welcome to try. Great, thank you, Michelle. Mm -hmm. We have some few more minutes for a few more questions. Um, how about this one? Is there an option for chromatograph chromatographic pre-separation? Pre-separation, I think you, you mean to separate different component. Um, just for, the answer is no for that because we depend on, we do GCMS separation, okay? So we depend on the irons in the MS spectrum to separate component there. Um, so chromatogram separation, I understand the issue and we will, uh, we will investigate um, that area. Thank you, Michelle. Mm -hmm. How about this one? Uh, what is the range of know-it-all IR and Raman spectrum? Um, we don't have fixed range. People can build databases within uh, uh, any range. Uh, that's the flexibility there. You, within one database, you can have spectrum from different ranges. So we don't have a, a fixed range. But uh, basically, all kinds of IR Raman uh, spectrum can fit into, uh, or chromatom can fit into know-it-all. We don't have a, a range limitation. Thank you, Michelle. Get one more, one or two more in. Is the QC expert option best used for confirmation of known materials and not generally for unknown matter? Yes, that's correct. A GC, uh, uh, the uh, QC expert is for uh, you, you. You want to answer the question: Is this uh, compound is what it is? You know, you have to have pretty strict matching. Thank to you. confirm that. Great. See if we could get one more in here. Um, this session largely focused on anal analysis capabilities of know-it-all. Can you also tell me a little bit about using know-it-all for data management? For data, um, I've been, uh, I've been um, working with know-it-all for 20 years, and I do think know-it-all database management is the strongest. Uh, it allows you not only build databases with a various spectrum range for one particular spectrum, and you can also um, put uh, different techniques. For example, for one record, spectrum record, you can put in uh, IR, Raman, NMR, MS, uh, all this kind of spectra into this record as long as they, they belong together. So it's very flexible and importing, exporting, we have 130, over 130 different file format to deal with. Um, and you can build it, for, okay, for each record, you also you can easily build a um, chemical structure into it. And our chemical structure, you don't have to have one particular exact structure. You can say fentanyl compound or PFS, you know, you know, all those kind of different class of compound with Marcouche structure in it, you can build it. So it's pretty flexible. It's, are proven to be useful for many, many years now. Excellent, thank you, Michelle, for that. Well, I think we've reached the end of our time today for questions. I'd like to thank our assistant editor, Dr. Liana Ergen of Wiley Science Solutions for taking the time to present us her talk on the introduction to know-it-all for IR and Raman for vibra vibrational spectroscopy, as, as well as Dr. Michelle D'Souza for assisting with the uh, Q&A. Any questions that were not addressed will be answered by email if able. This presentation will eventually be available for on-demand viewing on the Wiley Science Solutions website at sciencesolutions.wiley.com in the webinar section. Thank you very much for attending 
and I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day.